Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to try and investigate why this knit up uh, box down here you can't see it there it's messing with me the bottom one it was messing with me last week when I was trying to connect it to the awesome Lenovo X3550 Model 4 and it has been messing with me today as well let's uh, go over what I've tried at the moment I have all the drives pulled out except one that one is in um, because it was teasing me I was gonna try and take the drives out of the drive trays here and um, I wanted to put them in a um, one of these IBM X3650 model 1's they have an Adaptec rate controller in there uh, an older one and that has some some tricks that it can pull on the drive so it can it can do a little bit more than uh, the LSI controllers usually can I was about to do that when I thought um, why don't I just take the cable from the the dash here and instead of the IBM X3550 model 4 another one I could just take the cable out of there and put it up to the IBM X3650 model 1 so I did when I had all the drives in it really wouldn't um, it was not cooperating I could go into the rate controller setup and it would just die in there so I just kept pulling drives out and now I'm down to one and it shows up I started with this IBM server tried it on that one but I could see that I've been messing around with some weird drives here these are 10 terabyte uh, Hitachi drives host managed SMR disks um, which meaning meaning that the drive itself is not managing the the SMR part but uh, the host the operating system has to do that uh, I never got that working but I don't remember if I disabled the rate controller or did something because that one wasn't able to to communicate with this bang at all it just kept dying so uh, we switched over to another one luckily uh, I have three and a bag up but never mind it's a lovely day outside meaning that i have this irritating solar flare and um, on my screen oh cloud nice um so it sees that one drive and it sees it in number 301 slot and it doesn't say that so uh, yeah i think we should try and pop in another one see if what happens let's take the one next to it let's pop that in and it becomes green and let's go up here escape and then disk utility and it should check the drives again it did not like that much I have restarted the server now it sees the two drives I have just uh, popped out the drives up here so that they are not interfering these are uh, probably 400 and 450 gigabytes SAS drives that are in the server so um, yeah now it sees two I am not sure maybe this is not hot swappable it's uh, rather weird I'm gonna try and go out again and then we'll pop one more in and see what happens there maybe just give it a second That flare is really... Okay, that helped a little bit. Yeah, that is not good when it does that. Okay, it does not like when I pull the, uh, put the drives back in. When I do that, it, uh, it freezes. So, I have, right now I have the first strip of drives uh, put in. So, I'm gonna try and go out and I'm gonna put the next ones in and see if we find anything weird just taking a little bit of the time to see when it messes up and I'm rebooting the server again luckily this server boots really quickly or it does the post really quickly now it will check the network cards there's gonna be a little section here Broadcom I guess Broadcom and then the other Broadcom and then it's gonna come with the RAID controller and I need to press control A 
to get in there and we'll get in there when it has done checking it out okay it got in here uh, we have a bit of a problem here because well I have put in eight drives and it only sees seven six net apps and one Seagate so it's missing a drive I wonder where that is okay I was lucky it was this drive that wasn't showing up so I uh, took that out and I replaced it with this one and now I have eight drives here so uh, we're at the right number so I'm gonna continue this oh and the bad drive is here okay so this next roll I have the two first roll running uh, this third one is messing with me um, first I put in all the drives that failed then I took that one out that failed put that one in took that one out that failed so now I'm taking this one out uh, to see if, if that's a bad drive so yeah it takes a bit every time we have to boot and wait for it to come up I have the faulty one this one I've tried with all of them and as soon as this one is in it doesn't work this is drive number 10 so up here I'm scanning for drives and it went came to number 9 and then it stopped so I think I'm gonna take that out another suspicious one and then try and move the two next one in hey we have the first drive that actually lights up and complains about that there is something wrong so um, yeah that's probably not that great ah dang it another defective drive in in that one okay uh, it's probably a good thing that we are finding them okay this is where we're at so we are missing four drives right now we have 20 drives in here and they are they're working um, if I put in these two drives it's uh, it's not able to load uh, the the rate configuration utility it, it dies if I put in these two drives it, it lights up orange and complains so apparently there's four bad drives so now we can kind of see here we can go to disk utilization and we will we'll count up to mm, 14 I guess 15 I forget there and there are all the drives um, from 0 to 15 and to get onto the next page I have to press page down and it counts up the next drives and there should be well, there's four good this uh, rate controller has a feature where you can initialize the drives which is awesome to do that on a hardware basis so um, I want to initialize the last drives that I've put in I need to go on to the second page or just take the last four drives that has come in here and initialize those and yes and it's initializing those drives so. cool I was hoping that that would be able to fix some of these drives but um, apparently not so I think I will now that this is working I'll go around the back and I'll disconnect the box and I'll try and put the drives in here I took out one of the fillers and just gonna shove the drive in there see if I can hit that connection oh so let's go in oh it's a tight spot uh. so just need to remove that uh, dash connector and it's right here the x3650 model 1 has a built-in external port for uh, for a desk so I uh, put it in there we just put it up there that is not connected so it takes a while every time you boot the server to for it to find those drives so and uh, yeah just to save some time I don't want to mess with them and then we'll take the drives see if we can do a little ninja hack have them line up <laughs> There we are. Cool. I think we'll just give it a couple of fillers. Fine. Let's turn that on again and see what happens. It's 
get rid of that one. It's complaining about uh, that I've been booting too many times. So um, yeah, there's nothing to do about that. Live with it. So right now it's searching for the rate controller or searching through the rate controller and see if there's any disc for us. Uh, they're still not complaining up there. Okay, do we see anything? Okay, so um, it, sometimes it complains here and we have to go up here and tell it that whatever we did was okay. Just deal with it. Let's go back. See, sees nothing. Anything there? Nothing. I'll try and reboot it again and see if it finds anything the second time. Okay, it's, uh, it's orange on both drives. Uh, so, um, yeah, these are no good. I'm gonna try and uh, take these out of the drive cages and do the same thing. The next two drives are loading or booting or... Well, we're not gonna boot them, we're just gonna go into the rate controller, but check them out. Looks like there is activity on the drives up there, but I'm not crossing my fingers too much. I think we might have a couple of deadies, goners. This is where it often dies, but yeah, let's see. Let's see what it sees, if it sees anything. It sees, sees one. That's better than none. In slot five, okay. We'll go and uh, initialize that one. Initialize and yes. There. And we'll try and do a rescan, see if it picks up the other one. That should probably be bay number six. Well, if we could save one of the drives, that is an improvement. No, that's still just bay number five. Except if that is if it starts at bay zero. I don't know. Let's check here just to slot five i don't know which one is bad and which one is good now ah, i'll take one of them out and see if the other one is the good or the bad one okay i took this drive out and that drive was in bay number six here which is bay number five because they start at zero then i moved that one over here just to make well do something and we can see the orange light in there it does not like that drive and in here it does not show up either, so uh, we check disk, nothing. So, and I also went in here and I did a rescan and it found absolutely nothing here either. So, nothing. So, that one is, um, is bad as well, really bad. I'm hoping this one might be good as, so we're gonna put that back in the tray. Okay, that didn't work out. The last drive is here, and as soon as that is in, I don't get further than here. It doesn't go into the controller manager thingy, so um, yeah, I'll have to take that out again. Okay, it was actually also teasing me without that drive. Uh, you might be able to see that I, I, I messed around with putting them in order, so that the Seagate was first, and then other drives after that. And there are different reversions, versions of these drives. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Uh, let's see the last ones. I haven't messed with those. So the very last drive is also a Seagate. So, okay. I'm gonna try and put that drive back in and see if it will recognize it. Even though it was teasing me. Maybe, maybe now it's better. Nope. As soon as I put that last drive in, um, it doesn't go in. So that's, an, that's irritating, but well, 20 drives are working. So where this one is full of 600 gigabyte drives, SAS drives, um, the top one is full of one terabyte SATA drives. And they have this circuit board that convinces the system that, ooh, I am actually a SAS, but um, yeah. Let's try and connect that and see what happens. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to mess much with it. I do believe this video is getting long. So, uh, 
but let's uh, switch over and see what um, what the awesome IBM X3650 model 1 sees on the chop shelf so I just turn on that box it's gonna be looking through the drives I guess and uh, yeah there it started it's gonna check those 24 drives oh. Oh dear, it does not like those at all. They are just not there. No device. No device. There should be a lot of devices. We scan. Scanning? Okay, that's no good. So when I got those NetApp boxes, they were full of two terabyte drives and each of those two terabyte drives I had to re-partition uh, from being formatted with 520 bytes and uh, change that to uh, 512 bytes. So it might be that this print here is expecting a 520 byte drive to work. So I'm going to try and remove that print, just take it out, see what happens. So I've removed the screws, let's see if we can get this out of here. Just really not want to. I'll remove this. It's a tiny little thing. It's actually, it looks rather that CPU on there or process or controller thing looks rather beefy. So let's try and move this forward so that it can reach the connection and put it back in. Drive is back in. It's lighting up orange. I don't know why. It's complaining about something. It doesn't tell. So let's try a rescan here. See if it will um, help us there. Is there anything? No. Eh. Okay, I must admit, I found that some moron had forgotten to push the connection in all the way on the top uh, disk shelf down here. I'll have a decent talk with him afterwards, but um, yeah, I'm not gonna name any names, it wouldn't be fair. I don't think I have less problems in uh, this disk shelf. It refuses to scan the drives as it is, so I'll probably have to do something like the same thing and go through drive per drive and see why it's messing up. This is kind of tedious work. I might have been able to do it on the X3550 Model 4, but somehow I just trust the awesome X3650 Model 1 a little bit more. I don't know why. It's, it might be stupid, but you know, you go back to what you know. But it's not liking this. Remember, if you need some parts for your home lab, check out bargainhardware.co.uk where you will get 5% off if you use the checkout code MYPLAYHOUSE, small letters. And yes, I'm affiliated with Bargain Hardware. So, thank you very much for watching my videos. Please remember to give this video a like and thank you very much for watching and do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Have a really nice day. Bye-bye.